Hi everyone. Welcome to the Landscape Photography Show. We got a wonderful show for you tonight and uh, we apologize for starting a little bit late. Uh, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with uh, Ray, but we we got it sorted out. Um, for some reason we can't see Ray, but we're going to be able to see his screen and we're going to be able to hear him talk about uh, the photos he's going to show and uh, the information he's going to share with us. So uh, we'll miss seeing his face, but we'll we'll move on. So um, first thing, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, introduce myself. My name is Kevin Rowe and I live in South Jordan, Utah, which is in the Salt Lake Valley. And uh, I'm an amateur photographer, and I love uh, doing lots of uh, uh, landscape photos where I go out and hike in the mountains and uh, do that. I'm a curator for the landscape photographer photography theme and a uh, moderator for the landscape photography community. And... Uh, we got Margaret, who I think everyone, just about everyone knows and loves Margaret, so go ahead and introduce yourself, Margaret. Hi, everyone. I'm Margaret Tompkins, and I'm from the great Kansas City, Missouri area, and I'm just thrilled uh, to be here tonight and see some of the great work from Ray Billcliffe. Uh, he's a good, dear friend and one of the greatest photographers that you'll ever see on Google Plus and has wonderful themes. I think he's going to tell us all about those, so I'm really just thrilled to be here tonight and looking forward to our show. Awesome. And Jim. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, I'm Jim Orthman. I'm an amateur enthusiast photographer, which means I have a day job, uh, based in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, love doing landscape photography, color in black and white, and uh, you can find me on G+, helping out in the landscape photography theme and the landscape photography community. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. And for a second time, we've uh, got a guest curator, or guest panelist, that is, and Belinda. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Belinda Shi. I am a San Francisco-based landscape photographer. Um, I do share my uh, photography tips and travel experiences on my website, Belinda Shi, which is my name, BelindaShi.com, and uh, I participate in photo activities on Google+, Plus. and so here I am, and thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started here with our uh, show starters. So we've had uh, several hundred photos that were submitted to the show and then uh, us as, as uh, panelists go through and each pick a photo to display uh, for a show starter. So let me, uh, I'll start out with mine. And this is John Hunt and you know, I, I saw quite a few photos in the uh, event of docs and they they do they make a great leading line the other thing that this one does is that with the long exposure <clears throat> it's made some lines with the the clouds and so it kind of just from both ends the top and the bottom brings your eye into the photo so I really enjoyed that and let me go to uh, Jim thank you yeah this is uh, Doug Hagedorn and uh, I just like everything about this shot um, you know, it's it's very understated with the atmospheric effect. Um, the the leading lines aren't all that explicit compared to a lot of photos that were posted to the event, but I think it's it's very effective. A uh, nice framing with the trees, uh, gorgeous color. Just really like this shot. And by the way, going through the photos posted to the event, it was not an easy thing to pick one. No, it wasn't. All right, thanks, Jim. Margaret. Um, I agree with what uh, the others have said. It was so difficult selecting a photograph, uh, but this was my choice. Um, I love the gorgeous leading lines there, and uh, one thing I always like to see with the leading lines is that even though your eyes drawn into the photograph, there's something there at the end of that leading line, something to really look forward to. And you see that gorgeous lighthouse, and not only that, it has a wonderful reflection in the water. Uh, so this was just uh, downright awesome, and it's from uh, Keith Johnson, 
and he's out of the UK. So gorgeous photograph, Keith. Thanks so much for sharing that. It just really is delightful. Awesome. Okay, and Belinda. All right, I completely agree with all of you. It's such a tough job to pick only one picture uh, of the theme. Um, it, there's just so many good photographer uh, photos. Um, so interesting thing for me is uh, when I go through all the pictures, I notice that different photographers have different interpretation of a leading line. And um, well, I'm not going to go into too much details of like different themes and interpretations, but uh, for this particular photo, uh, it's from Tuan Nguyen. Um, obviously, you know, leading lines is very much used in lots of architecture uh, photos, um, and uh, this bridge uh, is so simple. Although you can, if you're an experienced photographer, you probably know that it's a little, uh, you know, heavily retouched. But the result is so simple, um, and uh, the photographer successfully leads the viewers into the far distance of the uh, picture, just almost giving you a sense of both, you know, space and time. So I just really, really enjoy this. Excellent work. Great. And then uh, you just posted this in the in the chat, Ray. Is this the one that you were you chose? Yeah, I picked this one because uh, it's not a, a leading line as such, like a railway line or a stream or a river leading right in the picture. It starts with a, a big foreground object, a beautiful uh, lily, and then takes the eye into the picture with the other little lilies getting into the back. Um, leading lines are not always obvious. Uh, that's why I chose this one. It's a, the, the lines are there, but they're not obvious to see. That's a beautiful lily pond picture. Yeah. Yeah, Love the reflections in that too. Gorgeous. Figure eight. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, <clears throat> we'll have uh, on our next show. If you're if you didn't get your photo chosen this time, then hopefully you'll come and post some photos to the next event, and uh, we'll try and. Uh, get you next time. So with that we're gonna go ahead and go over to Ray and uh, let him start his presentation and uh, Ray why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself first and then go ahead. Okay, I'm a retired photographer, scuba diver and uh, karate instructor. I uh, live in the UK. I uh, did live in Florida for a long time in the Everglades and um, my passion is definitely photography. I'm out every day with my camera. Um, I'm not a technical photographer, so if you start asking me about focal distances of lenses, I have no idea. Uh, I would describe myself as an artistic photographer. Um, I try to see things from a different point of view that uh, normal people would look at, and I see I crawl around in the grass. Uh, on my hands and knees looking for things to photograph and uh, it gets me into all kinds of trouble with passers-by who think I'm just crazy um, but that's what I do um, the picture that Keith Johnson showed before I think well, Mark that was your choice that's my lighthouse where Keith must live near me oh cool oh wonderful, wonderful. yeah that was my lighthouse that's just along the road from where I live <laughs> Um, I apologize that uh, you can't see me because my camera for some reason is not working. I got some Windows updates uh, just a few minutes ago and it sort of made a mess of everything. So I'm hoping you're going to be able to... Can I switch to this picture now? Yep, you're on it. We can see it. You see the picture of the sunlight on the beach? Yep. Okay. Um, this is a picture of my local beach. It's a two-minute walk from my house, and this is uh, just a few minutes after the sun came up. And it's one of those mornings where there's not a lot of color in the sky, and um, the sun is shining extremely bright. Um, when we look about leading lines um, and uh, sunlight and the colors in the picture, all of that doesn't matter if the composition is wrong. Now this shot looked nice when I took it, and then when I looked back on the little screen, 
the leading lines are lower than there. The seaweed is there. There's a little bit of wet water to the to the uh, left of the seaweed, leading straight out to the sun. But it's not the picture that's the best one. So I move the camera on its tripod about three feet to the left and took this picture. Can you see the picture that just changed? Yep. Okay. And I thought this one made a, a much better composition. The sun is now uh, a little bit off center, so I'm utilizing the rule of thirds. Horizons on the third way line. And the bit of seaweed at the front changed, changed its angle, so the leading line was much more pleasing uh, on the composition of the whole picture. I'll go back to the first one, and then the second one. So composition is everything, guys. Uh, leading lines are important, but they don't have to be obvious leading lines. Yeah, it's amazing to me, Ray, that just, just I do that often. I just uh, take a photo and then move a few feet, and it's a much better photo. Yeah, it, I, I like to take a number of shots of the, uh, the same scene. And then uh, later on on my computer, I can pick out the uh, the best composition. Everything looks nice on that little camera screen, that little frigging screen we have. All pictures look nice on there, but they don't look so good when you blow them up. Okay. Uh, can you see the picture of the uh, the rocks and the gentleman up in the sunlight there? Yep. Okay, when we're talking about leading lines. This has got leading lines, but this great lump of rocks takes us down to the uh, very center of the picture where there's a gentleman in a pack on his back as a baby in a crib. I took a number of shots of uh, this scene from different angles of that gentleman standing out there. He, he didn't know I was taking the pictures, so they all kind of shots. Um, but look at the light. This was a very bright morning, about an hour after the sun came up, no color, and the, the top part of that picture, the white, is all burnt out. And most photographers might look at that and think, well, that's not a good idea, but it, that, that white makes this picture. We go from the leading line of the, on the rocks to the bottom right in the darkest area, a diagonal straight across the picture up to the white. And although there's no detail in there, um, it is that burnt out white that makes this picture look what it is. Uh, I exposed this for the middle ground uh, you exposed this for the white, then uh, the entire picture would have just gone black. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to cut, you expose the camera for the middle ground, which is the center of those uh, those rocks. When you're walking along a, a beach and you see little pebbles, uh, what interesting subjects they make. And what makes this picture so interesting is not just the leading line of the three little pebbles leading out to the water line, but look at the color in the light, in the shadows in the picture. You couldn't have got this at any other time of the day except dawn or maybe if you're on the other coast would have been a sunset. In, this, in the, that rock in the center, that light that is shining right uh, uh, around there and giving the little wrinkles in the sand, for those of you who don't go out shooting at dawn, if you want to improve your pictures 100% or even more, you need to get out when the golden hours and start taking your pictures because that's when the light is at its most magical. If this had been taken at um, 11 o'clock of it, somewhere around about the midday, then you wouldn't see any shadows. The color would have gone... Um, and it wouldn't be the same picture. I love how the low light angle brings out the textures. Yeah, the sand is magical, isn't it? Those little the smooths where the water is, and the little uh, rough bits of the of the sand. Yeah. Uh, this is shot at one eighth of a second. It's uh, I'm on ISO 200 as I normally am. Uh, one eight hundred at f16, and uh, that one eighth of a second is. Fast enough to uh, not get too much blur in the motion, but slow enough to get some blur. And uh, you see that the, in the, the line of the water, little wave coming in. Uh, so when you're taking a picture like this, timing is critical. 
you've got to keep your eye on that tiny little wave and when it gets to exactly where you want it then you have to click the shutter and take the picture so it's it's been able to see the whole picture of the in your mind before you actually take it what is it you're trying to get i mean these little pebbles on the beach people walk past them and don't even see them uh, but when I look at them, I see the entire picture as you see on your screen right now. I see the light and the shadows and the colours. Um, that picture is, is, is it's my favourite picture right now that I have. It's on my screensaver. And uh, <coughs> beautiful. Okay, let's move on. Can you see the picture of the uh, the the beach with the dark shadows? Yeah, I'm just making sure you can see these moving forward. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Leading lines. This picture is absolutely full of leading lines. You can see them in the water. The wave takes us to the distance. The the the, the water lapping up on the beach, up on the sand, takes us into the distance. You've got that from corner to corner. The the dark shadow takes us right into the distance, where there's some little people uh, just walking on the uh, on the beach. Gentleman at the front there with his hands in his pocket tells you that this is a pretty cold day. It's a day in February. <coughs> February just gone and uh, still some people out there on the beach, which always makes it interesting for photography. You got this ramp going down at the front, which takes your eye down onto the sand. And then the promenade on the right hand side leading off into the distance where the light is coming from. Uh, this is a sunset, and uh, not normally. I don't normally get good sunsets on my beach. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I've got a sore throat. <coughs> okay, try again. Uh, the this is a sunset, and um, it's casting very strong shadows, and. A few more minutes of uh, being on the beach, the sunlight had gone and uh, the beach became quite dark. So the leading line is mainly the one that runs right through the center of the little dog in the middle, middle of the picture is the, uh, the light and the shadow uh, leading the eye into the picture. So this, that is a picture that's absolutely full of leading lines. <clears throat> Here's my lighthouse. This is uh, the look at the other side of the causeway from the one that uh, Keith Johnson took. And uh, a number of leading lines again. We have the <coughs> the causeway up on the left hand side, the concrete blocks. You have the rocks starting uh, just off the center on the right, the, the line of locks leading, uh, leading out. You've got the reflection of the lighthouse itself. And then you have the curve of the sand. <clears throat> taking you around the picture. I wish I had that lighthouse by my house. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's, an icon on, it's an icon on the northeast of England coast here. It's a very favorite place. Um, if you go any other time of the day, you can't, you, very difficult to get a shot of the causeway without anyone on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so dawn is the time. And there's always two or three photographers there uh, shooting away with the, is the light. We haven't had any good dawns uh, recently, uh, for the past few months actually. Been no colour in the sky, a lot of fog and mist, but they make for their own beautiful uh, kinds of pictures. So this picture of the lighthouse here has got a lot of leading lines, uh, makes it a very interesting, and you, the, the subject um, is dead centre. The main subject is dead centre, of course composition tells you you shouldn't do that, but for a picture like this, uh, the lighthouse has to be in the middle. I love the wonderful light in this as well. The light on that rock down there, and it's reflected on that uh, the concrete barrier there. I just love the gorgeous light. Beautiful capture. Okay, can you see a picture of some rocks in the lake on a misty picture? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, this is Lake Carmen in the Florida Everglades, where I used to live. Uh, one of those dawns that is just absolutely magical. Uh, when you get up at dawn, you go out and, and you shoot. The light is varies every day, but it's not always magical. Maybe one in every 50 or 60 mornings, 
you get a one like this. <clears throat> it lasted about three minutes. This, <laughs> and, and I took about 20 shots in those three minutes and trying to move my camera out. It really wasn't a hurry. Move it here, move it there, and trying to get this golden glow. I had never seen colors like this on a dawn before. And uh, a beautiful mist. Uh, I don't know where the mist was coming from because it, it, it sort of came down and then the light shone gold and then within a few minutes the, the mist was gone and it was just a white, another white uh, morning. The lady lines are pretty obvious um, with the rocks leading into the distance and was, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice again. I think that's a great uh you know, I think most of the show starters we we showed had, uh, you know, something really strong that was showing a leading line. But typically, when we're shooting landscape, it's more like this, where you have, uh, you know, some rocks that are kind of leading you out, and then you have a piece of land that's leading you right out to the sun. So that's a wonderful example of leading lines. Right, more subtle. Yeah, bringing bringing us back to composition. Uh, we should always have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. Um, if the foreground is pretty prominent, like this rock on the right-hand side, then that is the start of a leading line. If you foreground, your middle ground is slightly smaller, which it will be, uh, and not in the straight same line, then that will add to the second part of your leading line, taking you out to the distance. So remember when you composite, pose the picture, always have foreground and uh, middle ground and background. Okay, the, one of the easiest ways to get leading lines is to shoot some kind of river or stream. Uh, this picture, the composition is such where I've observed the rule of thirds. The horizon line is down on the bottom third and the focal point is the distance up in the river is in the third of the picture as well. The leading lines are there with the shadows of the trees in the in the, uh, the river and the river bank on the right hand side with the green grass and the, the little leaves, which is actually um, garlic. Okay. Earlier on, when this went before the, the I think this picture is probably taken around about July or August. If you go back to uh, May, beginning of June, those banks would be all covered in white garlic flowers and the smell of garlic is almost overpowering it's incredibly strong so the flowers die off and it leaves this carpet of green leaves which covers the ground and uh, makes for beautiful pictures so shooting the river in a stream always gives us uh, a good leading line here we are into my favorite beach again just a two minute walk down the street from me and i'm there this is another one of those gorgeous uh, early morning. Sun is not quite up in this picture. It's uh, slightly pre-dawn. I think it's about a four second exposure. Um, the leading lines here are not quite obvious. You can see the, the, the rocks on the, on the uh, right hand side pointing to the little empty spot dead center where the water is. But the leading line is very subtle. Smaller little pebbles and rocks at the front bigger ones in the center, and then the tiny little ship way out there on the horizon. It's very difficult for me to take a shot uh, down on the beach without getting one of those ships. There's two or three of those ships every day come into the river here, so they're always anchored out there on the uh, horizon line. So that always gives me the good point of uh, getting the distance. Mm -hmm. And the golden glow of the light, uh, that's the early morning, guys. You, if you want to get that, you've got to get out of bed and go on the beach or out in the woods or the mountains as the sun's coming up, and then you will get the light and the colors. We wouldn't get those colors any other time of the day. Okay, this is the kind of dawn that I've been getting on my beach for the past few months. Uh, very cold, very foggy. Um, but look at the leading lines. <laughs> Footprints leading into the distance. What more can you uh, can you want the, as someone's footprints leading them away? Not many people on the beach on this morning. This is uh, 
probably about two hours after the sun came up. The uh, sun is a lot higher in the sky. But we call this a sea fret. It's because the air temperature is cooler than the, uh, the sea itself. And so we get this, uh, this mist. And that's all we've been having every morning now for, for a very long time. Hey, Ray, can I interrupt yep. you and ask a couple questions from uh, viewers? Yep. So this one is going back to the the first uh, shot with the, the dogs and the people, and you had kind of the, the dock going down to the, the beach. Um, the question is, is, the, is that picture HDR or blending? Yes, this one, I believe. Uh, it's a single exposure. Um, there's no, uh, no HDR. I do have photomatics and I do uh, bracket my shots occasionally, but this is a single exposure. Awesome. It's it's strong because the light was strong. Yeah. Okay. And then I I had another question. Just uh, there was um, someone was asking if this is recording. Yes, it is recorded. As soon as it's over. Um, anyone can go back and watch it. So um, go ahead and back to you, Ray. Back to where you were, I guess. Okay, this is my magical lighthouse. Um, can you see the big red rock in the middle? <clears throat> okay. This flies in the face of all composition. No way ever on a photograph should you ever put a big rock right bang in the middle of your picture. I love it. I love this. <laughs> But it's one of those times where the, the golden rules of photography don't count. In fact, there are no golden rules to, to speak of because all rules of photography are sometimes rules. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Um, if I took away this little triangle of seaweed on the right-hand side, if that wasn't there, that rock would be in the wrong place. But that little triangle of seaweed leading to the rock, leading to the, the reflection of the lighthouse, out to the lighthouse itself gives us a beautiful diagonal line, uh, which is the leading line into the picture, and it's complemented by the uh, the promenade and the rocks and the walkway on the right hand side coming down uh, to the centre as well. <coughs> so there you go, composition right out the window. And again, guys, this is just after dawn. Beautiful red sky, starting to go into the golden glow. Um, one of those mornings where it's just absolutely beautiful to be out there and the light is magical. And Ray, what, what time is it for you right now? Uh, it's 3.37 in the morning. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out that Ray doesn't mind getting up early in the morning, but this is your result. So. <laughs> Yeah, I went to bed about, uh, I've changed my entire life around. I don't have a television set. And when I decided to get rid of it, I meant I could go to bed at 8 or 9 o'clock at night instead of watching TV till midnight. Um, by being able to do that, go to bed at 9 o'clock, and it uh, uh, takes a little while to get used to doing that, but I'm awake by 3 in the morning, and then I'm ready to go out and uh, start my day shooting the door, and I would not change what I do. So get rid of your TV sets, guys. You don't need it. It's all bad news. That may be the best recommendation we hear this evening. Yeah. yeah well, I got rid of mine about uh, I don't know, 20 years ago. Uh, I was living in the Cayman Islands as a diving instructor, uh, and I had to be up uh, at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock every morning to, to get the boat ready for the people to go out diving. So I was always up before the sun. Uh, watching TV to midnight, didn't help at all, so something had to get. I had to get a new job and get rid of the television set. Uh, man, am I glad I got rid of that TV. <laughs> Grab the camera instead. Yes, that's about the time I started photography. Um, I met some, a couple from Adobe. Uh, they were part of the Photoshop team, and I talked them to scuba dive, and I was absolutely astounded at what this guy could do with this Adobe Photoshop. Uh, on his computer with the pictures that he was taking. Uh, he took a pic picture of me underwater, which I don't have anymore, and he added a shark in, uh, and, and I was convinced the shark was behind me that I hadn't seen it when I was dying. He just put that in the picture, and uh, from that moment on, I was hooked. You got a 
Leon Herbert just commented that he hasn't had a television for 20 years, so. Excellent. I, lo I, lo I love that. As long as he's getting out there in door and he's moving his life around a little bit. Um, if you don't shoot at the dawn, you're never going to get pictures like this lighthouse, the, the red sky, the, the reflection of the sky on the walkway. It, you can't get this picture any other time of the day. Even sunset wouldn't be the same. Uh, rule of thirds on this, the composition is absolutely uh, spot on and the golden rules of photography. Lighthouse is over on the... Uh, the, the, the left third of the picture, the sun is just off center. And the leading line is the causeway itself, a solid concrete block at the left of the causeway where the water is just spilling off, takes you out to the, uh, the lighthouse. But look at that red glow, the light shining uh, down on the, wet, on the wet concrete. That's what I like so much about this is the light being reflected on the, the beach there and the the level, it just, uh, it, it's almost like a mirror. It's gorgeous. It is. Uh, wet sand, wet concrete, anything where the water is coming over. Um, all my lenses that I do, I have a polarizing filter that's on the lens permanently. I know some of you use uh, the ultraviolet uh, filters to protect your lenses. I like the, polarize, the polarizing filter. Um, and you can get just, it helps to get rid of the glare. You get glare on wet leaves or wet grass and on wet concrete and wet sand. And the polarizing filter will allow you to get rid of some of that or even most of it. Mm -hmm. Ray, can I interrupt just a minute? <coughs> yes. Two questions from BJ Bolander. Uh, one is uh, referring to one of the earlier photos. Um, is it leading lines that are the three trunks in the stream an important feature? So th there were three tree trunks, and she's asking if that was uh, an important leading line feature for you. What the picture? This one. Yeah, this one. Yes. Uh, when I'm setting up my camera, I'm actually standing ankle deep in the water here. My boots are full of, full of water. Um, you have to put yourself... In the picture you're about to take, what is it that caught your eye? Um, and the tree trunks are leading lines that are taking your eye from the from the foreground, the bottom of the picture, up into the picture. <clears throat> and the, they are very important. The, the, you have the rocks there also, which point towards the distance, and the, the, the shape of the stream itself coming to the V in the distance. Yep, yep. And uh, second question, and, and I don't, she's wondering if there will be links to these photos after the show. And I, I don't know if these um, are in your G Plus uh, albums or not. Uh, most of them will be already posted on G Plus. Uh, yes, most of them are already there. Good. Yeah, so just go to Ray's profile. And if they're not, if you drop me a. Uh, uh, a message on J plus I'll post the picture for you um, and uh, I think there's also links to other places on the internet where I have uh, photographs uh, 500 P px uh, Behance uh, folio HD different different galleries Okay, here's the leading lines. Uh, the composition is, is such where the lighthouse and the gentleman fishing has to be in the center of the picture. Uh, the leading lines in this way are not leading you directly in the picture. They have the foreground of the, the band of rocks. Then you have a band of water. Then you have a band of rocks that the gentleman standing on. Then a little band of some rocks. And it's the, the bands that are taking you away from the foreground out to the lighthouse. So the, the leading lines are actually running uh, horizontally across the screen. They're not leading you directly like railway lines out to the, you know, the subject. Uh, this is a, a midday shot or just in the early afternoon. The, you can see the light on the lighthouse is uh, past the midday so it's around about three o'clock in the afternoon and it's lighting up the, uh, the west side of the, uh, the house there, uh, on the lighthouse. 
Uh, the gentleman fishing is the, the focal point of the picture. He gives scale uh, and balance to the picture, which is very, very important. Um, when you guys are wandering around with, you, with your cameras, um, you have two things working in your head. You have your uh, subconscious mind and you have your conscious mind. And if guys have ever walked through a town and you've got uh, uh, somewhere you're going to go, let's say you're going to go buy a pair of shoes, so you know exactly which shop you're going to, so you're walking through the town and you don't notice anything. That's your conscious mind. When you're out with your camera and you suddenly say something and you say it with your subconscious mind and you turn to look for it, what was it that caught your eye? Maybe it was a bird or a butterfly or the color of a flower in the grass, something that catches your eye. That is the time where you have to stop and think, what was it that I was looking at? What did I see that caught my eye? Because that's the picture you're going to have to try to, to take. Um, and then get the composition right uh, after that. But Try to imagine what it is uh, that you want to portray in the picture and what's the best way to do it. Um, Another question real quick for you. Um, they want to know if you use a either a graduated neutral density or a neutral density filter at all. Okay, this picture that you see of the water uh, Moving out back to the sea is a, a long narrow exposure. It's about uh, two seconds, maybe three seconds. I haven't looked at the data. Um, and this will be done with my ND uh, filter, and I have two of them. I have a number four and a number nine. Uh, they're not graduated filters. I don't use a, a graduated ND. These are solid ND screw-on filters that fit onto the end of the, uh, the lens. Uh, um, Ray, yes, I have a question for you. Uh, I'm really uh, happy that you brought this uh, subconscious mind versus the conscious mind. In your experience, um, you know, did you find oftentimes your conscious mind leading you to take a better picture versus your subconscious mind sometimes just by intuition can get you actually exactly what you wanted? You know, it's the, it's the subconscious mind, I think, that brings the subject to your conscious mind. Mm. Um, when I could go back to, uh, to when you were, if you're walking through a town and you get to the destination you were going to, you can't remember anything about the walk that got you where, where you were. You don't remember how many cars there were, what colors they were, what shoes people were wearing. You don't say that stuff. That's right. because you're operating on your conscious mind. But if, when you're doing this and you're walking in the woodland or on the beach or somewhere and then something catches your eye, that was spotted by your subconscious mind and then brought it into the conscious mind. Right. Um, i to get all philosophical here, but once you've got <laughs> that into your head, then you've got to ask yourself, what was it that caught my eye? What was it that got my attention? And if it was the light shining on a rock, maybe you just walk past it, so back up a little bit and see if you can bring the light back again. And I, I get lots of pictures of pebbles on the beach by just literally following what my subconscious mind is telling me. And that's, yeah. how, that's how I get such great pictures. That, that, that's uh, that's great. That's uh, why I asked you this because I, I find in my own experience a lot of times my intuition. The first picture I had no idea why I took it. You know, could be the best one. Even I tried like five or six times later on. Sometimes the last one is the best. Sometimes the first one is the best. So that's why I was asking you, <laughs> which um, which one you you usually like the most. But anyway, you answer very well. Thank you. Okay, here we got a, a longer exposure of the, the water running back in. These always made good leading lines, the, the lines of the water going back into the sea. Um, I think this is probably about 20 minutes after the sun came up. It's way over on my right-hand side of the picture there. You can see the, the white just off the cliff top. But look at that magical sky. Uh, you wouldn't get those colors any other time of the day but dawn. And... Uh, it's great to be able to just sit on the beach with your tripod, 
Um, I'm sitting down on the on the ground, so my tripod is way down low, probably about 18 inches off the ground. And um, I'm sitting in where the I'm actually getting wet as the waves come in, so you have to get down low to get that water running back into the uh, the ocean itself. Um, I'll bring up my exif data and get the, the shutter speed. It's one quarter of a second, F16, one quarter of a second, ISO 100, uh, 18 millimeter uh, lens. That's my, my 1020 wide, super wide angle lens uh, for that picture. Uh, another shot on my beach. Uh, we've had a lot of storms. This was just recently, just a week or so ago. We had a lot of storms in the UK uh, over this winter time. And where you see in all these rocks on the beach now would normally have been sand. So the sand just got washed away and it's later exposed all this beautiful uh, the rocks. But look at that crack in the centre of the rock leading you right out to where those people are standing in the distance. Uh, a lady in line that couldn't be ignored, ignored. Um, still sort of a stormy sky. It's the, the mostly overcast day. Uh, this picture is taken just as the, the sun came through the gap in the clouds, uh, lasted a few minutes, and then it went grey and dull again. Uh, and then you would have to s just sit and be patient, twiddle your thumbs, and wait for the sun to pop out uh, behind the next cloud uh, and, and take another picture. But look at the top centre where the people are standing. Do you see the little light reflections of that white building in the water? Right. That was what my subconscious mind spotted. And when I stopped to look at it, I didn't see the reflections. I saw the people and I thought, well, what's my subconscious mind telling me? That the people are there? Because I already knew that, and it wasn't. It was only when I studied, what was it that caught my eye? It was that white reflection of the building in the water. And once I got that, then it was able to focus the, the, the camera to bring out that uh, little reflection. So right dead centre, right there. That was the what my subconscious mind was telling me. That's the picture. Um, so there you go, guys. The subconscious mind versus your conscious mind. You think you're in control and you're not. That little voice on your shoulder is in control all the time, telling you the things you should be doing. So you just got to listen to it. Okay, another kind of leading line. We've got the promenade here, yes, swinging around uh, from the diagonal on the bottom left, away around up to the uh, the top right of the picture in that beautiful curve and shape. And one of the winter storms that we've had. Um, again, the, the the sun coming out between the clouds, and it was just a case of having my tripod set up and waiting um, until I got the waves just about right. And the one I was trying to get is that wave in the distance between the two ships is the wash. It's a, the wave has hit the pier and splashed up, which I didn't get because it was still too dull. And then as it goes back out to sea, it meets an incoming wave and it rises up. And that's what I was waiting to get. And I was just lucky that when that happened, you had that beautiful line of waves in the bottom left hand uh, just about to break and smash against the wall. And you can see where the water has come across the bottom of the picture uh, onto the walkway. Anyone walking around the, there right now would have got absolutely soaking wet because that was really uh, breaking up. You can see my ships out on the horizon. It's very difficult to take pictures out here without getting those ships. Uh, but they're great because they give balance to the picture. They give focal distance po points in the distance. But that curve of the promenade, man, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Right from the bottom corner, uh, set me tripod so the the railing, uh, the fence at the bottom there would start in the diagonal and take you around and into the picture. And that ship on the uh, top right is in the perfect position to stop your eye, leaving the picture and bring you back in to the uh, to the wave break. And I, I like those little bits of red too. They just really kind of pop, and they're just in the right spot. Yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit of flash of colour right there. Um, I quite often go out when it's stormy. I have a 
one of those Amazon plastic rain covers. It's just a polythene bag that slides over your camera and it makes up all the buttons easy to use uh, and protect it. And I, uh, I have two of these, one in my bag, one in my pocket. Because I'm out quite often in the rain because uh, the rain is going to stop and normally if you're out and, and, and you, you come to the end of a storm the, the light can go really magical you go from the dark to the light um, sometimes you get a, a yellowish glow in the, in a, over the stormy skies um, so you've got to be out there to, to get that you, it's no good looking out the window after you watch the TV and thinking well it's going to stop raining soon You've got to be up there in the rain and, and be there when it does stop. Okay, my magical lighthouse again. And remember the picture I showed you earlier, that big red rock stuck in the middle of the picture? Yeah. Well, this is the same red rock, and here it is right back in the middle of my picture again. Um, I love to be on this little beach. Uh, at high tide, it's all covered in water, so you, you can't see the sand and you can't really get onto it. But look at the lady lines in this picture. You've got the water running from the right-hand core bottom corner, taking your eye out to the incoming wave. The incoming wave then takes your eye along it, past the rock, and out to the lighthouse. So you've got a, a zigzag right there. Uh, the golden glow of dawn is very evident over on the right hand side of the picture and uh, the texture of the sand and the little um, foamy spots at the front give a lot of motion in the picture. So a number of leading lines there and uh, all serving the purpose. Uh, composition for the horizon is always nearly always rule of thirds. So that is about the only golden rule that I could actually say is if you're shooting a, a, a distinctive horizon line it needs to be in the top third or the bottom third. The rest of your picture is just composed to get you the uh, to what looks best to you when you're out there taking it. Mm -hmm. Ray, we got uh, one more question from BJ Bolander. <clears throat> Wondering on your prior shot, I think with the S curve, um, is, is, did you crop that to be sure the bottom left corner has the railing just so for the composition? I uh, don't remember cropping it. Probably not. I would have used the live view screen uh, on my camera. and I try not to crop my pictures afterwards. I try to get a, the exposure exactly as I want, want to have it later on in my computer. You know, occasionally you you have to crop something out. But uh, no, that, that railing would have been placed exactly where it was on the picture um, as I focused the camera. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can zoom your lens. You can just, when, when you've got your picture set up, just twiddle the zoom on your lens and you can move it in and out and you can change the, 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 the size of the picture and, and get it exactly right. Uh, it's not good practice to take a picture and think, well, that's good, I'll crop that later. Um, you should always be aiming for the picture that's going to be finished. You need to see the finished picture in your mind before you take it. <coughs> um, here we have a landscape shot. I played around with the colours a little bit in this, although not too far. Just add a little bit extra blue uh, to the, the sunset. Uh, this is a sunset. This is over on the other coast to where I live, a place we call the Lake District. Uh, it's it's a place of beautiful mountains and uh, uh, forests and, and lakes. But the leading line on this picture is the valley. It's the, the valley in the center of the picture, just the tree, the offset off center, leads your eye out to those mountains in the distance and those little pine trees just sticking up uh, just off center there. Uh, the, the dark against the light draws the eye out to them. <coughs> and, uh, a lot of times a leading line will actually be the focal point of the picture where you have a dark and a light. Uh, we have it with those little pine trees in the distance. Um, this big tree uh, just off center as the guide leading your eye out and then the valley picks up the leading line and takes you into the distance. This was a beautiful sunset shot and all I did was in Adobe Photoshop was uh, went to color balance and put a little bit of blue into the picture. 
as you can see up on the top left hand side uh, where the big knee is. So the, the blue uh, just sort of give it that overall violet, but it was a very beautiful sunset uh, in its own right. <coughs> Another misty day on the, on the beach. Um, when I was talking earlier about the storm clouds, every now and again when the, uh, the sun eventually breaks through, you get that yellow glow. Uh, this picture is, hasn't been um, boosted, well, maybe a little bit in Photoshop just to bring out that yellow glow, but this is exactly the color of the light when I took the picture. Um, there's a beautiful yellow sun, and it's blocked by the, the mist and the fog, uh, the overall ambient light is a yellow golden glow and this would have been around about nine o'clock in the morning maybe an hour or so um, after the sun has uh, has started rising the the leading lines is this little bit patches of foam where the wet sand takes you out to the white line which sweeps around the picture and takes you out to where the gentleman is walking what caught my my eye on the subconscious mind was the gentleman walking but was his shadow a very dark shadow shining just right so I waited um, till the, 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 the shadow was intersected by a little bit of incoming wave I took a number of pictures and this was the best one I got um, rule of thirds has been, been uh, observed here the gentleman is over on the, the, the top third of the picture the horizon is in the top third. Um, minimalist kind of picture, uh, but the light is what makes it. That magical golden uh, yellow glow. Uh, not very often you see that, but if you're not out there, then you won't see that. Okay, this is not a very nice picture. Uh, <coughs> uh, it, it, I don't know why it didn't take, um, but the reason I'm showing it to you is how you can get an object like this dog in the shadow to add balance um, to the picture. The, the horizon line in the back of the houses and the, the, the sun breaking through the clouds, this is really a very dull grey day as you can see by the, the clouds which are overhead. Um, and I had to boost this quite a lot in the Adobe Photoshop just to get uh, the exposure right. But I, I, I've incorporated it so that you can see that a blank space can be filled up by an object to give balance to the picture. Uh, that's why the, the dog is like standing there. But look at the shadow of the dog. It's almost as pronounced as the dog itself. The little people up here are blurry. Um, not a good picture technical wise, but... Uh, it, it just shows how you can use something to give balance to your picture, to make the composition uh, even out. A similar picture uh, taken on the same day uh, as, the, as the dog in the blue one. Look at how many dogs we have on this video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dogs in that little, bit, that little picture, people walking on the beach. And a lot of places in America, dogs are not allowed on the beach. Well, they are in England, and uh, I'm glad they are. But look at the leading lines here. Look at these sweeps of the water coming in. Uh, it's a fairly stormy sea, so we're getting a lot of uh, foam. This is uh, probably about two to three inches deep, uh, this foam here. And then look at that sunlight line here. So my subconscious mind here would have given me the red glow in the wet sand and um, it's emphasized by the whiteness of the water coming in and the little people there with their dogs they just add the magic to the picture i love this picture and look at the ice cream shop see that little ice is right there in the middle many times when i'm out they sell a fantastic cup of cappuccino coffee in that little coffee right there that's my favorite beach I live. We see this tower sticking up at the back. Yes, well, I live just beside that church there. So a two-minute walk and I'm down on the beach. <coughs> uh, this is a sunset shot. So this is late afternoon. Uh, this is looking uh, west, east to west. And the sun has now gone down behind the houses. And that's what's given us the, the golden glow in the picture. 
you don't get the light and the colors, guys, if you're not out there at the right times of the day to take the pictures. Uh, and I know it's difficult uh, when you're at work, and but you're not at work seven days a week. Okay, can you see this big canyon? Yeah. Yep. Hello? Yep. Yep, I thought you'd all gone home. <laughs> <laughs> we left you and you're just talking. Yeah, this is uh, Canyon Lands in Utah where I, when I was living in Florida. I went there for a vacation. Um, you didn't even come this visit me, Ray? Sorry? And you didn't even come visit me? <laughs> that's where, yeah, that's where you live. Um, yeah, I stopped in Mohab for a couple of days and then I drove down to Colorado. Um, but this roadway starts up in the top left hand corner. Uh, so you would come along on the horizon there, and then you would drop down onto the road, and it comes off the picture to the left, <coughs> comes back in a little bit on the right, and then sweeps around underneath the camera, and then it comes to the little zigzag where there is a white uh, vehicle on the little bend just there. And then look at this little S bends and takes you out. But what a leading line. I mean, look at that. You've got the canyon taking you way out to the distance, snow covered mountains up there, and that roadway. And what an awesome drive. I mean, I filled up so many uh, cards uh, taking these pictures. And do you know, I had one, one of my cards was 64 gigabits that I'd spent four days and I lost it. Oh, no. Yeah. 64 gigabits of pictures from uh, this trip. And I have no idea where that card went. I can only assume was when I was changing cards in the camera. Somehow I dropped it and didn't realize that I had done so because I would have found it again. So 64 gigabytes from that trip disappeared completely. But I got some pictures to remember by um, some of um, Delicate Arch and uh, Mesa Arch and... Uh, for you guys living in America, if you've never been to Mohab, to the Canyonlands and Arches National Park, boy, you've got to go there because the scenery is absolutely spectacular. Nothing yeah. like it anywhere in the world. And you, you live there, Jim, so you should know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And, and the other thing to know is, according to Kevin, in this area, sunrises don't work at all. Yeah, you know, no, that's way too early for... <laughs> No, no, it doesn't because I believe it's because we're up in the high mountains. Uh, you don't get a lot of red sun. I didn't see one when I was out there, and I was out there for dawn. Um, I have a beautiful shot of Mesa Arch um, where a, a local photographer told me to wait to about an hour after the sun has come up. Uh, the underneath of the arch glows red because it's reflected off the cliff face. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't do that at dawn itself. It's about an hour after dawn where the the rock really turns red. Um, we need to send it Kevin out to look for that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, it's it's along that road somewhere because I seem to dimly remember somewhere along that road I changed cards, <laughs> and I can only assume as when I had it in my hand and put the new card in the camera, I dropped it because. I searched everywhere, and I searched and searched. I went through my bag a thousand times. I just couldn't find it. Sixty-four. Well, that's that's just an stuff. afternoon hike for Kevin, so he'll be on the lookout for it. Yeah. And do you know how many pictures are on a 64 gigabit card? Thousand. Yeah. Heartbreaking, guys. Heartbreaking. So be very careful with those tiny little cards. Yeah. And Ray, or we're just about out of time. How much do you have left here? Um, I'll just rip quickly through and then you tell me when it's time to wrap up. Uh, here's a picture on my beach again, the, the lighthouse way in the distance, storm clouds, the rain is coming down, that's passed over me now and moving out to sea, so it's not raining where I'm standing. And the line, leading lines into the picture is this zigzag of form. And again, the light um, coming from the, uh, the, the set. this is a sunset picture, so the sun is setting behind me. Uh, gives him that beautiful glow in the picture there. Uh, here's a dawn shot of some pebbles on the beach. The leading line here is the V-shape that the pebbles actually make, pointing to the water coming in and then out to the little wave in the, in the distance. 
But look at the shadows on this picture. This is the sun is rising right up here in the top right hand corner, casting the shadows on the rocks. Beautiful red sunrise. Uh, you could not get the colours and the light there at any other time of the day but dawn. Uh, waiting for this little foamy bit of water to come to that point before I click the camera, so timing was very important. Um, colours and light, guys. You've got to get out there in dawn if you want to get the pictures. One of the finest dawns we had this winter uh, was just after Christmas. Again, my little ship out there on the, on the horizon. So I'm just above the horizon, and I'll leave the lines here, go from the pebbles in the foreground pointing out to where uh, you get this slab of rock and then the slab of rock takes your eye out to where the sun is. Obzul in the rule of thirds, sun is over on the third of the picture and the horizon in the top third as well. Oh, gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Are we out of time? Yeah, we are. Okay, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, it was great having you, Ray, and uh, uh, like we just stated, um, I most of most of these photos are on Ray's stream, so just click on his name um, in the show notes or or wherever. Type his name in the search bar, and and you can check those out. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go over to Jim, and we'll finish up with our photographers to watch. Yes, and and just one more comment before we do that. Yeah. Because so many people asked. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, the show will be uploaded to YouTube, so you can watch this and all the previous shows on YouTube. Okay, so um, we'll start with uh, my uh, recommendation. This is Leah Kennedy, um, part-time photographer from Perth, Australia, and uh, she's got beautiful photos in her stream. Um, Recently made the cover of Australian Traveler magazine with one of her shots, and uh, she has not been on Google Plus all that long. Has I think around 500 followers. So I would encourage you to go take a look at her stream and uh, and follow her and see if you don't agree. Uh, she's got some great work. Oh, well, I agree. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Right. Uh, Margaret, your choice. Uh, this is uh, Sweeto. Um, I've uh, followed her uh, since I think I've been on Google Plus a little over two years, and uh, just an outstanding uh, photographer. This is one that she recently shared to the landscape photography theme. Uh, just a beautiful, uh, gorgeous sky there. Uh, she is a fine arts um, uh, photographer out of the San Francisco uh, area. And she does just an incredible variety of work, um, does a lot of long exposures, um, uh, black and white, uh, does beautiful architecture shots. And I think you have another one there, Jim. Yeah, this, this I just love the composition here, that uh, white that is in the uh, water there at the bottom uh, in the foreground just really draws my eye into where the color is there. And that sky just seems to be rushing to meet me. So I just uh, love this, uh, uh, just a gorgeous shot. And she's a wonderful photographer to be following. So if you're one of the people who are not yet following her, um, definitely take a look at Sweeto and her, her work. It, it's truly wonderful. She really has gorgeous work. Okay, Belinda. Yes, uh, I'm... Uh recommending everybody to take a look at Felix Inden's work and he's a German photographer I don't think he has lots of followers yet probably 800 or something um, but his work is absolutely phenomenal and this happens to be uh, somewhere I recently have been uh, in South Iceland so I know how difficult it is to take photos like this uh, first of all you have to like a stand in the water in the early morning and you need to point your camera to the exact angle to face the sunrise uh, in a in a in a background, and uh, you also need to, you know, um, try do tons of trials and error to make sure that your shutter is, you know, long enough to capture the motion of the waves, <laughs> but not too long. Uh, otherwise, it will be completely white. So, um, and the and the wind and the cold temperature was. Uh, 
challenging as well. So another, yeah. So uh, Jim, another one exactly also in Iceland. I think uh, um, lots of people uh, probably have seen tons of northern light images and similar to uh, Milky Way's night scene kind of uh, subjects. The easy part is uh, to point your camera to the sky, but the difficult part is to uh, find a nice uh, simple foreground to, to create a beautiful composition and I think uh, Felix has done uh, an amazing job again you know to capture this uh, landmark uh, rocks and uh, I don't know you call it the background or foreground in this picture but uh, mixing that with the northern light it's just an absolutely gorgeous capture yeah. okay great thank you and Kevin yeah, so I've uh, chosen Greg Mills, and he's out of Portland, Oregon. And uh, he does, uh, I see quite a bit of black and white in his stream, and he does great with that. And he's also got some color photos as well. But, um, you know, over by Portland, they have quite a bit of great landscape to shoot, and so he, he gets out and takes advantage of that. And then uh, go ahead and go to the next one. Okay. So this is a, a color shot, kind of the same area, but... Uh, go check out his stream. You'll see quite a bit of great stuff. Um, hard to just pick out a couple from his. So um, I think you'll enjoy that. Definitely. Gorgeous. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then I, th I think we got uh, Ray's um, a little bit too late here. But he, uh, the name of the, the photographer that Ray... Um, recommended is Louis Figueredo and uh, he was he was the same person that uh, Ray chose that picture of in the first uh, in the show starter of the lily pad so um, we'll put his name in in the show notes so you can go check that out since we don't have the pictures up but um, great show and uh, we appreciate everyone uh, watching and uh, Feel free to share with your friends and let them know where they can find uh, this show page. Uh, immediately after this, the uh, the recorded version is is available just right from the the show page. So you can go there. You can go to YouTube and go to search for the Landscape Photography Show on YouTube, and that will bring up all of the past shows as well. And uh, we have a lot of great shows in there. Um, our next show is going to be on April 22nd, and we're going to have Jeff Sullivan. And uh, Jeff has been on with us before. He's a, a fantastic trainer. Um, he does a ton of night photography, and uh, he does workshops um, at the uh, Bodie. Um, my name just went blank, but it's Bodie in uh, Nevada. It's the ghost town, and it's a pretty famous ghost town. And... So he's going to join us on April 22nd, and we'll get that event put up so that uh, you can start uh, adding photos to that event as well. And uh, we appreciate you coming. We appreciate it, Ray. It was great hey, talking thank, to you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. You thank bet. you. And, and uh, we'll say good night. Oh, wait, Kevin, uh, just yes, go ahead. Uh, we uh, have the new... Uh, contest open in the landscape photography community. It's on Stormy. That's our key word for it. So come bring your storm shots over to the landscape photography community and share them there. Absolutely. Super. Okay. With that, we'll say good night and uh, hope to see everyone again in two weeks. Great. Thank you. <laughs>